Hi, it's Kernetex here with another video about the Linux kernel on the Alder Lake architecture. And this video, I'm going to compare the runtimes of rendering the Povray benchmark scene in uh, two or three different kernel versions to see the existing improvements that have been made. Um, and I'm also going to be running a Blender benchmark, which is a little bit more uh, involved. It runs for about seven minutes on the Alder Lake. So I'll be running that as well as a comparison. I have been running other benchmarks um, in my own time, but because of the time they take, um, I won't be doing videos on those, but uh, what I think I'll be doing is collating these times into a spreadsheet and um, maybe in another video I can share the results that I've got so far. So what I'm going to do to start off with is to as before, boot the original kernel that I built on this machine um, after I put it together. And I'm going to run the benchmark again, as I said before, but the difference this time is that I'm going to only specify that the scene be rendered on 16 cores as opposed to 24. So if you can see at the end of this command, I've got here the W team, I don't know what W means, but obviously T is threads, it might be with threads, um, 24 to use all of the performance cores and all of the efficiency cores. What I'm going to do is to tell it to run 16 threads and if the kernel is able to identify what core is the best uh, core to use to put a thread on, then in theory it should pick the performance cores most if not all the time while rendering as rendering is an intensive process. So the idea is that if it isn't working we should get a, a longer benchmark, longer amount of time than if it was working because if it's not working it will put a thread to work on an efficiency core which will take a little bit longer than it would do on a performance core. So I'm going to actually run this um, a couple of times in case there's any variation. Um, it's quite possible I might actually run it three times um, to see what the difference is. If you remember previously, when I was running on 24 cores, we were getting the best time I got, I think it was 117 point something. So in theory, it's going to be a little bit longer than that. It won't be much longer, but it will be a little bit longer than that because I'm only specifying 16 threads. Those efficiency cores do make a difference, but not a great deal of difference, as we'll see. So if I start this first one off, um, right, what have I done there? Um, actually, in the wrong. Yeah, I'm in the wrong directory. I haven't picked up the right CD command. Yep, that's the one I should have used. So let's rerun that again. So I've got the 16 threads to run. All the other parameters are the same as before when I was um, attempting to get to the bottom of the problem with the throttling. So I'll get that running. As I say, this will take a little bit longer. I'm not going to bother monitoring the threads for throttling because I'm happy now that they are um, it, it's not happening that the CPU is run, running within its um, limits now. So I won't actually run this three times on the video. Um, it's going to take a lot longer. But when I did run this Originally, I was getting variations in time from 1 minute 33 seconds to 1 minute 39. So there's a variation of about 6 seconds there. Um, and as you can see, the 1 minute 33 to 39, it's, it's roughly 20, 25 seconds longer than with the full 24 thread. So you can see that the efficiency cores do add up to a, a fairly significant proportion. Um, it's probably about... 15-20% or so. Um, so I'll just run this just to confirm the measurements that I got previously. 
Uh, it's nearly finished. You can see it's taking a little bit longer. Um, if you recall the runs that I did previously, it would have finished by now. So there you go, it's got 1.34, so that's just that's one of the better timings I've recorded. Um, but as I said before, it was varying between uh, 1.33 and 1.39, so it's on the on the better side. Now there is uh, so another benchmark I was going to run, which is a benchmark within Blender, but because there's no uh, graphical interface, I, um, initially this had only been set up for the Intel um, built-in graphics, the... I think it's a 770 that's built in, um, but I've now added a basic NVIDIA card which I'm using and if I try to boot into the X windows it won't work because that, that NVIDIA is not built into this kernel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reboot and go to one of the other kernels. So I'll come out of that. So this kernel's 5.10, and when it comes up again, I'll go. I've actually got a 5.14 kernel, but it's not much different from the 5.15. So I'm going to go for the newest 5.15 I've got, which is that one there. Now I think I've got the GUI working on this, so. I'll be able to run some tests on this. I'll be able to run the Blender test as well, show it in action. Um, the Blender, I have to say, is not the most current version on Gen 2. There may be a the latest version in the testing, but I've used the current stable one because Blender in the past I've had a... It doesn't look like that's working, that one. I'll have to use the 5.15.12 one. So I'll just restart that. Um, yeah, it's 2.93, I think, the version in Gen 2 that's stable. So the instructions for the benchmark, which are built into the ben benchmark, don't make a lot of sense. It says to press a render button to start the benchmark off, and the render button's not there. So um, I can show you that if you want to run that. Good thing about um, the Blender is that, a bit like Povray, it's across platforms. So... Um, you should be able to run it on the major operating systems, the top three, if not more. So let's log in here. So yeah, this is 5.15.12, this kernel. So let's just check that yeah 5.15.12 so if I as I say, run this benchmark here I wouldn't expect to see much difference because there hasn't been any changes to the kernel but we'll get a because we're only running 16 threads I'll get another uh, record of the time uh, just to check that it's roughly the same. It may be slightly slower because we're running the GUI, there's more processes running in the background, so there's a chance that um, the, the result here will be a little bit slower, but it shouldn't be a great deal of difference.
Okay, so that's finished. That's finished on 137, so it's actually a little bit slower um, than the time that we got in 5.10. And so that probably is because of the GUI that's um, running as well. So it's, it's not a problem because we can use the 5.15 as a reference point. It, the basically was no changes done between these kernels that would have advantaged or really disadvantaged Alder Lake. Um, so, so I would normally run this three times to get some figures. I'm not going to do that. Um, but what I will do is I'll show you the Blender benchmark. So CD. Yeah, because we Blender benchmark. And to run it, on Gen 2, the Blender binary has got a version number in it, but um, you may find in your own distribution, if you're not using Gen 2, that it will just be called Blender. And then the file to load and the one we use is called benchmark.blend. You can find this uh, benchmark on the internet if you just type in Blender, Gooseberry or Gooseberry Blender Benchmark, something like that. It will be obvious um, what it is. So if I run that, so there's the project loaded. What I need to do now is to tell it to only use 16 threads and to do that, um, where is it? If I can remember how to specify it. performance that's it threads I want to specify a fixed number and I want to use 16 threads so that's that all I need to do now I need to press F12 to start the rendering so this will ensure that we give the kernel a chance to run this um, ideally on the best cause, although this kernel won't, so it's going to take um, a little bit longer. In fact, it might take as much as 10 minutes.
So that's finished. If I just zoom out a little bit, you can see the render time and the date there have appeared. And you can see it took, in fact, that's probably easy to read there, 10 minutes 57 um, and point 25 if it matters. So that's our sort of benchmark, if you like. So what I'll do is I'll quit this now. Um, We'll actually save that to save me having to remember to change the number of threads each time. And what I'll do now is I'll reboot and boot into the current kernel which is 5.16. Um, I've just updated the latest one that's available on Gen 2 on the testing which is 5.16.11 um, but the last suffix won't shouldn't make much difference if any <clears throat> so yeah it should be this top one here the latest one so we've just been in 5.15.12 so we'll go into this latest one. This is where it should be a difference now, as there should be, or well, there is a setting in the kernel uh, which allows the kernel to identify uh, which is the best core. It's not a perfect, it's a bit of a hack actually, but it, it works. Um, so we should be able to see that in action. So I'll run the Povre benchmark first of all. And it's got the 16 threads. I'll start that going. Uh, if you remember previously, we were getting in the region of 133 to 139. So this should, in theory, run a little bit faster because the kernel is a little bit more aware about different types of cores that are available on the CPU. Okay, that's done, and yes, we've got a faster time. We've got 131.1. So even compared to the fastest that I got, which was 133, there's a two-second improvement. Um, but compared to the slowest, which is what we're trying to avoid, so the, the fastest got previously, it could have been that it run most of the threads on the performance cores anyway, and that's why there's only a two-second improvement. The best improvement we got, the worst time previously I had was 139, so that's an 8 second improvement, which is not insignificant. Um, over 90 seconds is about a 10% improvement roughly, um, so that's that's pretty good. So we're seeing the effects of this change already. Um, I say it's not an ideal solution, it's a kind of a bit of a brain dead solution in that the, as far as I understand, it doesn't involve the thread director. The kernel just looks at the cores to see which ones are the fastest. Um, I'll explain that a little bit after this last benchmark, which I'll run again, which is the Blender benchmark. So I'll 
rerun it. I'll just check that it has retained the performance. Yes, it has. So I'll just run the um, F12, rerun the test, and wait for it to finish.
Okay, so that's finished with 9 minutes 54, well, 9 minutes 55 seconds, basically. And again, that's that's about a minute quicker um, than the original run, which again is roughly 10%. So you can see that the change in the kernel has made a difference, um, a performance improvement of approximately 10%. So what I'm going to do is to quickly go into the kernel and just show what changes um, are made in the 5.16 and the changes are under processor types and features and it's this option here by default this option is set config shed cluster and it basically gets in the way of the kernel identifying fast and slow cores the kernel is capable of identifying um, the speed of cores but this cluster assumes all cores in the same cluster which they are on this chip effectively to the kernel <clears throat> are all running at the same speed so it just allocates work to each core as if they were the same. Um, by disabling this, um, it doesn't put all the cores together and it just picks out individual cores based on the um, individual maximum speed of the core, the capability of the core. So therefore it will tend to pick the faster ones to put the, the work on. That's the idea of it. As I say, it's a bit of a sort of hammer to break a nut but it, it does work obviously as we've seen um, and as I said before I think it's in uh, I don't think it's in 5.17 I don't know if there will be any improvements in 5.17 but I've certainly read that there will be some patches from Intel for uh, the kernel to get access to the thread director on the chip uh, which will be coming in 5.18 which as I say, is due some time in spring so it won't be at the next drop of the uh, uh, Linux version. Next update, it'll be the one after that, hopefully. So, yeah, there we go. Um, currently 5.16 in Gen 2 is still in the unstable um, part of the updates. It's not a stable kernel, but uh, I have been using it. It does seem to be okay if you've got distribution that hasn't got the 5.16 available either through a testing or unstable branch then you might have to do what I, I did um, before it appeared in Gen 2 and that's just to download it from the kernel archive.org page and build build your own one. So thank you very much for watching, hope you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up if you found it useful and subscribe if you want to hear about more of these videos. Goodbye.